Hi. Today we're going to recreate Shroud's new stream transition in DaVinci Resolve. Like this. We're going to start here in DaVinci Resolve on the edit page. And quick side note here, don't rip off Shroud. I know I'm about to show you how to kind of rip off Shroud, but I'm using this as an example to teach you the tools you need to create something new and exciting and unique for yourself. And second side note, if this video is helpful to you and you want more tutorials in DaVinci Resolve, consider subscribing. But we are going to start here in DaVinci Resolve on the edit page, and I have already created a new timeline and set its resolution and frame rate. Then we are going to make sure our effects library is open and go to Effects, Fusion Composition, and drag that right onto our timeline. By default, this effect is five seconds long, but our transition is going to be nice and snappy. So we can right click on that, go to Change Clip Duration, and change that from five seconds to two seconds. And then with our playhead over that fusion composition, we can click this icon on the bottom to load up the fusion page. There are two main parts of this transition, the energy lines that sweep over the screen, and then the background layer with the text. We're gonna start by creating that background layer. And the first thing we're actually gonna do is make a reference grid that we're gonna use to snap some of our elements to place throughout the creation of this entire transition. I learned how to do this from another great video from Camera Tim. A link to that will be in the description, check it out. We're gonna create a new background node, make that white, and we can preview that, but then we are going to go into the image settings for that background, uncheck auto resolution, and change this width and height to 16 and nine. Now you will have to zoom in because this is only 16 by nine pixels, but this is gonna make sense soon. But then we are going to right click, go to options, show pixel grid, turn that on, and then right click again, go to controls, and turn on snap to pixel. Then we can just move that to the side and take it out of our viewer. We will reference this back very soon. But to create our background layer, the first thing we're gonna do is create a new background node. We can make that black. And if we have that background node selected, if we click this background node again, it will create a new background node and automatically add it to a merge. And the second background node, we are actually going to make a light shade of blue. This blue background will become the blue energy lines that will exist on this background layer. So with this node selected, I'm gonna click this polygon shape tool. And I'm just going to click around my screen in the sort of general shape I think I will want. And I'm not gonna close this mask, but instead I'm going to increase the border width. So you start to see the blue around this mask. And I'm actually gonna keep this fairly small. Now this looks more like something a preschooler drew instead of something cool and technical. So what I'm gonna do is pull that background we created earlier with our grid, pull that up in viewer one. And if I select that polygon mask, you will see the mask over both viewers. So now if I grab any of the points of this mask I drew, because I turned on snapping, those points will automatically snap to this grid. And I can use that to make a much more refined look. And at any time I can add points to increase the complexity of this shape. I've got this to a place that I like, but right now with this plain blue color, it's a little flat. So what I'm gonna do is actually add a new merge node after this background node, and then I'm going to create a glow node. I'm gonna take the output of this background node and pipe it into this glow node, and then take the output of the glow and take it back into the merge. And then if I go from previewing the background node to previewing the merge, you will see that it has added a glow on top of that by using the same mask. And then I can go into the glow and change any of these settings to get a final product I like. And if we hop back to the merge node after that, you'll see it over black. The next thing we're gonna add is a simple sort of foggy texture on top of this. So I'm gonna create another merge node and I'm gonna start with this fast noise. I can load that up in my previewer and I'm just going to increase the detail, the contrast a little bit and then pull down the brightness. And I'm actually gonna go in and change the colors of this. I'm gonna take the dark color, make that a nice dark blue and the light color and make that a lighter blue. And if I add that into the merge and preview, you'll see this pretty sort of rough texture. But what we're gonna do is add a quick ellipse mask to this fast noise, soften that up just a bit and then go into that merge and pull down the blend. So it's sort of just visible and that's even a little blocky. So I'm gonna go into fast noise and pull up the scale so there's a little bit more going on. And then I can even turn on the C rate just a little bit so that over time, it just sort of wafts around like fog. And the final thing we're gonna to add to this background layer is our text. 
So with our merge node selected, we can click this text icon. That will create a new merge and pipe in that text node. And with that text node selected, we can add in our text. And we are going to use the shading controls in this text node to really help this text feel integrated into the scene. I'm gonna come over here to the shading tab. The first shading element will always be your main text that you created. I'm actually gonna bring down the opacity on this just a hair before going down to shading element two. I'm going to enable that and by default it is this red outline. I'm gonna change that to a similar blue as this energy we had and then I'm going to crank up the thickness. This is pretty heavy handed so I'm gonna come down here to softness and turn this instead to a nice close glow around this text. And then if we go back up to shading element three, turn that on, by default it's this black shadow. But if we change that to that blue again, I'm gonna change this from a solid to a outline, and I'm going to increase this thickness even more and really crank up the softness on this one. Probably something extreme like 50. And pull down the opacity on that. So we have this nice vibrant close glow and then a less intense glow that reaches a little further out into our scene. We're gonna let this sit for now and go on to create those sweeping energy lines. To make sure we match the blue of the energy lines in the background, I'm actually gonna grab that blue background node we've created, copy and paste that. And then if I preview that, we'll see we're back to this full screen blue. But unlike last time where we were able to use only one single polygon mask, this time we will have to stack multiple masks on top of each other. But I'm gonna start with a single polygon mask and I'm gonna create a simple energy line that comes over the screen. Turn up the border width just a hair. And since we still have this reference screen up, we can take those points and make sure they snap perfectly to this same grid. And there we have our first energy line. And and then we're just going to repeat this process five more times. So now we have our energy lines drawn and we need to animate one simple control to get them to sweep across the screen. So I'm gonna select this first polygon mask, make sure we are at the beginning of our timeline and click the diamond next to this position control to set a keyframe. Now by default it is at zero and if we slide it up, you will see that it will shrink to the bottom of the screen. But if we take this control and manually type in negative one and then slide from negative one to one, you will see it'll come from the top of the screen fill the screen and then go to the bottom of the screen. Now at both negative one and one, if you zoom in, you will see just a little dot of that line. So what we're gonna do is at our first keyframe, we're actually gonna type in negative 1.1, move forward in our timeline and manually change that to 1.1. And then over that duration, our bar will sweep from the top to the bottom and off of our screen. With that polygon node selected, I'm going to open our spline viewer, select that node and that position we keyframed, click this button to zoom to fit, select those keyframes and click F to flatten, T to pull up our easing controls and increase this easing just a little bit on each end. And then next, I'm going to copy these keyframes, come up to these dots and actually change this to show only selected tool. Then I'm going to select this next polygon mask down, turn on that polyline control, go into our inspector and set a keyframe on position. And then I can paste that same position data. And I'm going to shift those in time just a few frames. And then I'm going to repeat that process for the rest of our shape nodes. Now if we preview, we will have all of our energy lines slide across the screen with slightly different timing. And next we're gonna pull in that same glow that we used on our background node and apply it to these energy lines as well. So I will navigate in my node tree over to this glow, copy, paste that, bring the output of this background into the glow, and then create a new merge node and bring the output of both this background node with all the masks and this glow node. And then if we preview that, when these energy lines slide across the screen, they will have that similar glow on all of them. So then if we create a new merge node, pull in the output of this background, we created the output of these energy lines and connect that to our media out, you will see those energy lines sweep over this background. So now the last major element we have to add is the flicker in of this background as the energy lines sweep over it. And to do that after this last merge for our background node, we are going to add in a matte control node. And with that selected, we're gonna add another polygon shape. By default, that will connect it into this blue input, the effect mask, but we are gonna change that to this darker gray triangle, the garbage matte. And on this first polygon node, I am going to trace this first energy line. 
and I'm actually going to bring it over here to the side so it actually closes into a complete mass. I wanna make sure this is lined up perfectly by snapping on our snap grid. That has isolated one portion of our screen, but for our next polygon mask, we're actually going to bundle two of these portions together. So I'm gonna start by tracing this first line, and I'm gonna trace back along this second line, but instead of closing it, I'm going to jump and start to include another segment further across our screen. Then I'm gonna close it up here. So then we just need to keep adding these polygon masks, choosing whether we want to combine these segments or leave them individual until each segment is accounted for by a mask. And remember, while you're making these masks, you can be pretty rough, but for each of them, make sure to jump over to this snapping grid and make sure they are lined up perfectly. So I've created four masks that together cover the entirety of the frame. And because those shapes are going to this mat control node, they're acting as a mask on everything that came before in the node tree, the entire background scene that we built. Now for each of these polygon shapes, the main thing we're gonna be working with is this level control. Now, the way all of these masks interact can be tricky. So what we're gonna do with this polygon node selected, it's click to add a rectangle mask on top of that. I'm gonna move this rectangle to the top of this node tree and then select that rectangle to make it fill the entire screen. Then for each of these polygon nodes underneath it, I'm gonna make sure the paint mode is on subtract. Then this level at zero, you'll see nothing as the level comes up, you'll see what was inside that shape layer. So with my first polygon node selected, I'm gonna scrub in the timeline until these energy bars are a decent way onto the screen. And I'm gonna bring this level down to zero, set a keyframe. Now these masks are going to transition in with a flicker and we're gonna manually keyframe that. Over the next few frames, I'm gonna move forward to that new keyframe, change this level position, and then ping pong back and forth until it finally settles at full opacity or full transparency. With this first keyframe set, I'm going to move forward a few frames, increase the level, move forward a frame or two, bring it back down, then back up before dipping back down and then finally settling at full transparency. And if we preview that, it should happen pretty quickly, but as the energy line is coming down, this one mask flickers into shape. And next what I'm actually gonna do is select all these keyframes in the spline viewer for that flicker, copy, move towards the end of our timeline, make sure that level is selected, click on that, and then if you paste, it'll paste those keyframes. And if you come down to these controls underneath the spline tool, this control reverse will create an exact opposite flicker effect so that it flickers out. So it flickers in, holds, and then before the end of the composition, it'll flicker back out. But now with that animation complete, we can select all of the nodes for that level parameter, click our next polygon node, navigate back to the beginning of the timeline, and you can see when that other flicker animation starts. So around that same time, maybe not exactly, I'm actually gonna go a frame or two before that. I'm gonna click that diamond next to level, click to select that in the spline viewer, and paste to paste that same flicker animation. And if we preview, you will see that flickers in with a slightly different timing than that first flicker. And then we're just gonna repeat that process and paste this flicker animation on our other two polygon nodes. And if I dip back into the edit page to preview this, it's looking like that initial flicker happens a little fast. So what I'm gonna do is open up the fusion, select all of these polygon nodes, and in the spline tool, grab that intro animation, and I'm gonna enable this time stretch down here. I'm gonna stretch this out so that intro animation takes a little bit longer. If you wanna add a little more motion, you can go into your main text node and right before it starts to transition on, set keyframes on size and tracking, scale forward until it just starts to come off and increase those so that over the course of the animation, as it flickers on, your text is moving, grabbing attention and then it transitions off. This is looking pretty great. If you want a preview of what it would look like on screen, you can pull in some footage or stills and preview that in the edit page, or you can just export this, toss it into OBS as a stinger transition, and while that background layer is over the full screen, set that as your transition point, and you can pretty seamlessly transition between different scenes in OBS. 
As always, thank you for watching. If this video was useful to you, please drop a like or a comment below. And if you use any of the techniques in this video to create your own stream transition, send me a link. I'd love to see it. Thanks. I'll see you next time.